welcome back to another Teaching Tuesday. I hope you got the announcement yesterday about memberships. They are now open. You can learn more about the different options by clicking on Join down below. That'll be next to the Subscribe button. You can also check out the Community tab uh, on this channel's main page, um, and that should have some more information for you too. So let me know what you think and would love to have you join us. The other fun announcement is what I want to talk more about today, and that is that I've set up a Google Drive folder uh, that has uh, a lot, or I, right now I'm still building up the, um, the collection of song charts, but I am going to be adding more and more new song charts every day. And along with that, I wanted to share with you uh, some practice tips this week as well. Um, and for starters, what I have is just a clipboard here um, with the song chart and what to expect and how to read the song chart. I want to just kind of orient you to that today to think about what you're going to find there in this Google Drive and uh, and how to make use of the different things that I've included and what to expect in the coming week. So this one is the first one I posted, This Little Light of Mine. It's on our How to Strum Your Ukulele playlist. Uh, I'll include a link, a link for that as well. But I want to just orient you to what you're going to find there. So when you open up that file, you'll see here at the top, here's the title. It's a traditional. And then I have some hyperlinks in here. Because they are PDFs, you can hover your mouse directly over any underlying text, and it'll take you um, to either a video or another folder within the bigger Google folder. In this case, this little light of mine, this says, listen to Sister Rosetta Tharp. Click on there, and it'll take you to a YouTube video of her recording. Over here, it says, play along with Avery Hill. It'll take you to the video tutorial that I've made uh, for this song. Now, this one, music practice tips folder, that will take you to another folder within the bigger Google Drive folder to let you know uh, about some extra practice tips that might help you as you continue to practice. Down below there, you've got uh, pictures for all of the chords, and then you also have this SP thing. And that stands for starting pitch. So when you are starting to sing a song, you want to know what note you're singing. Uh, and that is going to be a single note. In this case, it's a G, which you can play by playing the open G string. Uh, better yet, if it's a low G, that'll give you the right octave as well. But um, see how that works for you. And then next to that is a graphic of the strum pattern. Uh, underneath, there's just a little bit more information. Standard time, each chord equals four beats. Standard strum and straight time. Sometimes if it's a little bit of a tougher one, I'll include a link there to the tutorial as well if you need to review the strum pattern. And then just a reminder that the underlying lyrics equal the first beat of each measure. That's when we get to the lyrics down here. Then I typically have a chord pattern for you, and I've organized it uh, into groups of four, as I like to do, um, four bars to each line, so that you can kind of see how the song is organized. In this case, we've got four bars of C going across the first line, three bars of F ending with a bar of C, then two bars of C, E7, A minor, and finally C to G7, back to two bars of C. That's just to wrap your head around the fact that you've got 16 bars to play with. Each line is four bars. And then, of course, reminding ourselves that each bar is four beats. So just kind of getting the organization of the song in your mind is what that's supposed to help you to do. And then down here, we've got the lyrics. And as I said before, the underlined lyrics let you know where the beginning of each bar is. Right, and if there is uh, if there is no uh, lyric at the beginning of the bar, then there's just an underline there. Um, for verse two and verse three, I didn't include all the lyrics because it's the same kind of repeated pattern. Trying to save some space here, give you just kind of the basic um, uh, the, the the basics for what you need to play the song. Now, this is kind of a lot of information for you to then play along with me on the video. Right? It may feel though like, uh, especially if you are new to playing or if the song is new to you, that this is just kind of too much um, information separate from each other. You want to see it integrated together. And I totally get that. So on the second page of each song chart, I'll flip this over, is going to be a full song chart of what uh, of our song. And it's going to look like this. So here I've given you all the chords above the lyrics all the way through, just in case that feels like a more helpful way. Again, if you're new to playing or just new to whatever song is up there. However, I, I just, the teacher in me wants to encourage you as much as possible. 
especially with a lot of the songs that I um, that I post. These are what I like to call very jammable, campfireable songs, right? You can take, you can play 16 bars, right? And assign that lyric pattern on top of those 16 bars, right? Or you can look at that lyric pattern and figure out where those bars fit in. What this allows you to do is kind of take that organ, that, that information into organize in your mind, but then play it much more authentically and not playing chord to chord to chord to chord or lyric to lyric, line to line. It gives you an idea of the big picture of the song. And personally, I feel like that makes us all better musicians when we can hold that in our minds a little bit better than going kind of leapfrogging from lily pad to lily pad as we go. Like I said, work with what feels best for you. If you're starting with this full song chart, that's totally fine. Try to see if you can work your way up to playing from this main first sheet. Um, because that's going to be a nice step to what we're going to talk about next. On the third page of most of what you're going to see, I'll scooch that over there, wah, is something that looks like this, where there's a lot less information. Basically, I've just given you the lyrics at the bottom. This is what I call a cheat sheet. Uh, and what you're going to do here is use this space to look over what you had seen before, right? This information, this information, whatever feels good for you, right? Whatever helps you consolidate what you now know about the song. So you've played through it several times, you're ready for the next challenge. You take this space here and write out whatever works for you. It could just be a line of chords, right? Maybe you don't, maybe you have a pretty good sense of the rhythm and you don't need to, uh, you don't You don't need to write out how many beats or how many measures. You just say, okay, I here, if I'm gonna take my Sharpie here. I'm just going to literally write right here. Maybe all I need to know is that it starts on C, it goes to F, it goes back to C, stays on C, and then when it changes again, it's E7, then to A minor, then it goes back to C, to G7, and back to C. It might just be a line like that. That might feel really good. Or there might be, uh, you might literally take the boxes that I made, right? Make a big box. You've got four lines here, four lines, four boxes, right? And you might literally just copy in each box of what I wrote. The act of writing it down is a really important step to solidifying in your mind what this pattern is. Or maybe there's some kind of other picture. I'm going to be getting into more of that a little bit later with some other playlists and, and tips as well. But it could be that just drawing a doodle about how the chords are related to each other. Maybe it's a circle. Maybe it feels more like a seesaw to you. Whatever kind of uh, visual representation you want to have for the chords, put it down here. Whatever works best for you is going to work best for you. There's no right answer here. Um, but use this space to organize for yourself what the chord progression looks like. And then you can start to play just from your cheat sheet. So you can look at whatever notes you have here. Here are your lyrics as a cue. Um, and then the final challenge with this cheat sheet is there's a halfway down this line across up above it. It says fold here. When you can fold down your notes, give yourself 30 seconds to remind yourself what the pattern is, and then just try playing from the lyrics. These are all really nice stepping stones to, again, organizing the chord progression for yourself, but also committing it to memory in a way that makes sense, that isn't just rote memorization, right? It's meaningful practice, it's meaningful memorization, and just a really nice way to internalize the song that you're playing as opposed to always going back to the same song chart and following bar to bar, chord to chord. I really want to encourage you to learn these songs from the inside out. And so that takes just a little extra, um, not, I mean, not even extra effort than it would be to just rote memorize something. It's just a different kind of effort. And my hope is that this tip about using a cheat sheet and using how to use these different song charts in general, along with the other practice tips that I'll have to share with you this week, my hope is that they feel like they make your practice more meaningful and that you feel like you learn songs not just more quickly, but better and more effectively. So let me know how this has worked out for you, whether you've tried it on this little light of mine or any number of any songs that you have in your own repertoire or that I've shared with you. Let me know how it's going for you in the comments below. And if there are any questions that you have, tips that you could use for your practice, let me know that too. I'll be posting a bunch uh, this week and of course into the future. 
Thanks so much for joining for joining me today. Remember to check out that information about memberships. Thank you to those who have joined. So lovely to have you all here today. Uh, have fun this week and enjoy your practice. Thank you.